Okay, today in this first lesson on numerical analysis, we're going to talk about approximating first order ordinary differential equations using the forward Euler method. So just to start, we're going to review what a first order differential equation is. So first of all, an ordinary differential equation, or an ODE, is an equation relating an unknown function to some of its derivatives with respect to a single variable. And that single variable often is going to be time. And we refer to the order of the ODE based on the highest order derivative term in the equation. So for example, um, this is a standard first order ODE. We're relating the first derivative of y being equal to 4 times y. Another way to write this would be as dy of t over dt equals 4y of t, which is really illustrating the fact that y is a function of t. So to broaden that, the general form of a first order ODE can typically be written as y prime equals f of t comma y, or as dy of t over dt equals some function of time and y, which is a function of time. In order to approximate a solution to one of these ODEs, or to explicitly solve for one of these solutions, um, we need an initial condition. Um, so for this nomenclature, we're just going to call y at some initial time um, of y0 or y0. And typically that initial time is going to be time is 0. So one of the most important steps in solving any kind of numerical method is creating a discretization, um, also known as a mesh or a grid of our variables. Um, in this case, that's going to be time. It could also be space. Um, basically, we're going to break up our variable into a number of discrete points, and at each point, we're then going to solve our equation using one of these numerical methods. So one of the standard ways to do this is to define an initial time, which we're going to call t naught, and a time step. So for example, we could have t naught equals zero and a delta t of 0.25 seconds. And then each time that we're going to solve for is going to be t sub n, where n is every integer value starting at zero. And then you can see that t of any n is just going to be equal to n times delta t. For example, here illustrating um, what a time discretization would look like with uh, delta t of 0.25 seconds. Basically, we have t naught starting at t0, um, and then t1 at 0.25 seconds, t2 at 0.5 seconds, t3 at 0.75 seconds, and t4 at 1 second, and so on and so forth until we reach our final time. So anytime we're, we're using a numerical method um, for an ordinary differential equation, basically what we're doing is we're approximating the exact solution. So some of these equations, we're going to know the exact solution and we'll be able to compare our numerical method to the exact solution. And some of them, they're gonna be too complex to solve explicitly. And we're gonna have to use one of these numerical methods to approximate them. So kind of the simplest numerical method is this forward Euler method. Um, we make the following approximation of the first derivative term. We're setting dy of dt equal to y of n plus 1 minus y of n over delta t. This looks very familiar to our derivative definition from Calc 1. Basically, we're um, approximating a slope at a point, right? So we are saying the slope at some point is going to be equal to um, the slope between point n plus 1 and point n. Um, that's our rise, it's the difference here, over our run, which is going to be delta t. Um, and then we're going to take this approximation and we're going to plug it into our original ODE, where the left side was dy of dt. So we're going to replace that with this approximation of y sub n plus 1 minus y sub n over delta t. And all that is going to be equal to whatever that function is on the right side in terms of t and y. And then what we can do is we can rearrange that formula to, to yield this general formula for y of n plus 1 in terms of y of n, t of n, and, and delta t. So this is nice because it, we can solve this equation explicitly. Um, 
what that means is if we know t and t of n and y of n, then we can solve directly for our next um, solution um, point y of n plus one. And if we were to um, derive what the local error for this method is, basically the error between each approximated step, um, we're going to be on the order of delta t squared, which we can express as O parentheses delta t squared. Um, what that tells us is our error from our approximation is going to be directly related to our, how big our time step is. So if we make our time step much smaller, we're going to have a much better approximation. Of course, um, that's going to be a little bit more computationally expensive if we make t, delta t smaller. But for simple approximations like this, we should be able to make it as small as we want, and we'll see that our solution gets better and better. And since our error is on the order of delta t squared, we say that this method is, quote, first order accurate. Basically, we've done a first order Taylor expansion of our solution. Um, if, if we were to do a first order Taylor expansion of our solution, we would, we would basically come up with the same formula here. And then this is just a visual representation of what we're doing with the forward Euler method. So we have some no known point here at a given tn, and we're saying we want to approximate our solution at the next time step. Um, in this case, their function is x instead of y. Um, so they're, they're looking for x sub n plus 1, where um, you're basically approximating the slope at this point and using that slope to uh, calculate your next point. Um, and you can see that um, there's going to be some small discretization error here. Um, that's going to be proportional to our time step. So the key takeaway here is that for the for forward Euler method, we're going to use the following formula to approximate our next solution, um, or the solution at the next time step. And this is a first order accurate me method um, with a local error on the order of delta t squared. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And in the next video, we're going to go over a MATLAB example of how to code this up and um, use the forward Euler method for practical um, approximation of a real first order ODE. So check that out. And again, let me know if you have any questions.